And we're back on Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. That proceeds from our show, Sports Medicine Weekly. Go to support orthopedic research at Rush through the liveactivenow.org fund. I'm Steve Cashel, your usual co-host, being joined this week by Dr. Charles Bush-Joseph from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, the former head team physician. 14 years with the Chicago White Sox, still works with the White Sox and the Chicago Bulls. Time now for our Ask the Doctor segment as we close out another show here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Very easy, folks, if you want to get involved with our Ask the Doctor segment. Go to the homepage of our website at sportsmedicineweekly.com. You will see on that front page, our homepage, a picture of Dr. Brian Cole and I on the right side. Just click on the link underneath there, and you can ask a question, and uh, we'll pick the best ones for the doctors to answer. Okay, Dr. Chuck, here we go. This is uh, is something that I, I found very interesting here. We have Bill... Uh, commenting on this, and here's a question. What is the average cost in Illinois for stem cell knee injections? And then I'll follow up with this. Is there a difference if fat cells versus bone marrow are used? Will insurance cover any of it? We'll go one at a time. What's the average cost in Illinois for stem cell knee injections? You know, Steve, uh, this we're seeing lots of this in the lay media and the lay press, and there's lots and lots of information. Advertisements. Advertisements. In every we, paper, right? We see full-page ads in the Tribune yeah. on a daily and certainly on a weekly basis, even cover inserts. The regenerative medicine, which is sort of the term that we're using now, I work with the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American Orthopedic Society of Sports Medicine. And we're helping to put position papers together with the FDA because the FDA, this is all unregulated activity. Right. Uh, Because there's no manipulation of the cells per se, like what is done in Europe, practitioners now will extract cells from your fat or from your bone marrow or from different parts of the different areas of bone marrow and just re-inject them back in. And the cost of that, there's significant cost to that. There's some risk. Certainly, there's not surgeries, but they're in-office procedures that require some anesthesia. And the typical expense you're seeing is anywhere from about on stem cells, per se, $1,500 to $4,000 per injection. Okay. Now, what you're trying to do with any regenerative medicine, whether it be something as simple as PRP, those PRP injections go from... 800 to 1,000. That's where they spin the blood. That's where we take your blood. We spin it down. We take different components of the blood, the platelets or with or without white cells, and inject it in different areas. And, And depending on the components of the cells we're using, we're trying to achieve different properties. So for tendinitis problems, for Achilles tendinitis or tendinitis of the elbow, golfer's elbow or tennis elbow as we refer to, in those, we like white cells because we want an inflammatory response to try to stimulate a healing process. Whereas we're doing PRP injections into the knee, we generally don't like white cells. We don't want an inflammatory response. We want a more healing response. So we'll use what we say white cell poor or leukocyte poor shots into the knee. Now with stem cells, we're trying to get to those cells that have more potential, more healing potential. They're, They're the myeloproliferative cells is a term we use. And we want those cells that can stimulate the healing process, or transition themselves into actual muscle cells or ligament cells or tendon cells to get a better healing process. So now you want to go where the most cells are, and that's in your bone marrow. And certainly the areas where the most stem cell is in your iliac crest, which is around your hip. Now, I got to tell you, that's a big, thick bone. It's very deep. It's very painful to take the the, the cells out of there. Um, And it's probably the most invasive way of doing it. Whereas fat, obviously, I think you and I, unfortunately, have a little more maybe than we want. It's relatively superficial. It's easily accessible. It's not very painful to take out. Uh, You have to process it a little bit more because you've got to take a lot more tissue out to spin down the tissue to get the same number of cells that you would from your iliac crest. Okay. So we really don't know. There's lots of medical studies of saying what's more effective, one or the other. In reality, we're not sure. And that's why the FDA is saying, we're not sure. We need more evidence. And, and they're stimulating centers like Rush and, and like other major medical institutions around the country. Give us good hard science. Now, at Rush and with Dr. Cole, a senior author, we, you know, we produce several very strong papers showing the efficacy that is certainly with the PRP injections. They seem to be working about as well as the Visco shots that we've talked for in the past, but maybe they last a little bit longer. And instead of lasting four to seven months like we get with a Visco shot, we may get nine to 12 or even 15 months with a PRP injection. 
one thing I can say for sure, and I can make this statement unequivocally, that with arthritis, whether it be PRP shots, fat cell shots, bone marrow shots, we're not regrowing cartilage. We're really stabilizing the joint, making it less painful, making it function better. Any of the photographs you see in the newspaper showing those joint spaces improving or getting larger after stem cell shots, in my mind, those are bogus. They're taking the same x-ray in a different position to make it a little bit, little bit different. There's no science whatsoever says that we're clearly regrowing normal articular cartilage. Are they symptom, do they help patient symptoms? Yeah, the evidence seems to be pretty good that in a percentage of patients, they get good symptomatic relief. Is it worth the money? That's an individual judgment. And we always say, don't answer an ad in the paper. We think you need to get good information. And so if you attend a stem cell or regeneration clinic seminar, get all the information and then fact check it. We suggest you fact check it with your orthopedic surgeon or certainly with your primary care physician. You'll get much better information with an experienced musculoskeletal provider, whether it be a primary care sports provider or an orthopedic surgeon. They're going to give you a little bit more unbiased approach. The clinics, the clinics, you have to remember, they're selling you something, uh, but it's best to be informed. So uh, the the bottom line is we know it helps. We don't know how well it helps and in what person it helps better where it doesn't help. And we're still learning. And the FDA has asked our professional societies in orthopedics and orthopedic sports medicine to give them help. So we're still searching. And the last question in that uh, series of questions from Bill about stem cell knee injections, will insurance cover any of it? I've been told no. You're right. The answer is no. And uh, I'll I'll give up my other uh, uh, conflict here. I I sit on a medical advisory board for uh, AIM Anthem. So Anthem uh, uh, is obviously a very large insurer. You know, they, they... they're the Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield networks across the country. And I sit on their medical expert panel, and we evaluate the evidence about what is, quote, for, for and what's covered, what's not covered for insurance. And, yeah. and, and really, the medical panels that I sit on, uh, we're, we're not ready to make coverage decision on these because we just don't have the medical evidence to say they work. So uh, as I mentioned to earlier, Yes, uh, you're going to pay your hard-earned dollars for these treatments. And so you've got to make good judgments. We want you to be informed as you can with both the information of the provider that wants to give you the treatment and somebody who's also unbiased. And so, you know, again, getting a second opinion for these types of treatments, to me, is the right answer, never the wrong answer. It would almost be irresponsible of these providers, right, the Blue Cross Blue Shields, Anthem, Cigna, United Healthcare to allow that to go through insurance because it's so unregulated, correct? Well, no, they look at it the opposite. They say that there's no medical evidence to say that this okay. treatment is effective. Okay. So they're not going to cover it. I'm saying anyone could look at the ad in the Tribune and say, oh, the full page ad, let me go there. My insurance is going to pay for it. That would be, wouldn't you think that that just wouldn't be right? Well, I, I agree with the providers. I, you know, I sit on a committee that evaluates the advertising, and I would say that. Most of the regenerative clinic providers now have gotten much more sophisticated, much more careful. They always have appropriate disclaimers, legal disclaimers at the bottom of the ads saying, well, these treatments are not always effective in insurance coverage. Usually they're agnostic. They don't mention a word on insurance coverage for a reason because generally it's universally not covered. Okay. Doc, got another one. Again, uh, Dr. Chuck Bush-Joseph with us from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. It's our final segment of the show, Sports Medicine Weekly. Ask the doctor, Bob from Geneva, saying this, I uh, recently ran in the Chicago Marathon, Doc, but I can't get it going now due to pain. How can I get my running going again? You know, Steve, I have to tell you, uh, we're past the marathon now, but the, the, as, as musculoskeletal providers, both us orthopedic surgeons and our primary care sports colleagues, we are inundated in you know, September and early October until the marathons run. Then we get this little bit of a lull. Uh, everybody who made it through the marathon, uh, it gets quiet. And then about yeah, three to six to eight week range after the marathon, people trying to get it back going again. And all of a sudden now they're hurting. And so what it tells me is two things, you know, that a lot of people, they're running on adrenaline. You know, when they, they see that target, that, you know, the two, three weeks before the marathon, they're going to finish their runs. They're going to finish their training runs. They're going to do their cool down and wind up. And then, yes, they get that tremendous positive experience of running and completing a marathon. And then afterwards, they try to get it going again. They say, I'm really sore. And so most of these patients have a variety of overuse injuries that they kind of ran through. And it's really our time to do a reset on these patients. Many of them have IT band problems, anterior knee pain, patellar tendinitis, 
hip flexor tendonitis. They've altered their gait a little bit. They've got some muscle asymmetries that developed. And so we've typically on many of these uh, runners got to do a reset. And so we, they've shut down because they're painful. We'll have to get their pain and symptoms under control with medication and icing and heat. And then we usually want them seeing, you know, really a helpful provider, whether it be an athletic trainer or physical therapist, to give them that reset and balance to make sure they've restored the proper balance between their hip abductor muscles, their hamstrings, and get them going again. The key element for any runner restarting back up, starting back up a running program after coming off an injury or an overuse event is perfect technique. If you've got too much head sway, too much hip rotation, too much uh, uh, side to side sway, you're going to break down again. So this is where you got to depend on your, you know, your friends, your co-runners to look at you, evaluating you. And if you've got any doubt, you should be evaluated. So symmetry is the key element. IT band is the most common thing I see, and really that's getting your hip stretched out and getting your hip abductor muscles back in balance when you restart your running program. You're a radio natural. Great stuff, Dr. <laughs> Charles Bush Joseph from the Chicago White Sox, Chicago Bulls, and Midwest Orthopedics of Rush, filling again this week for Dr. Brian Cole. Thanks, Dr. Chuck. Great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, that's all the time we have for this edition of Sports Medicine Weekly. Many thanks to our producer, Eli Hershkovitz. Our coordinating producer is Teresa Ann Seeger. also want to thank David Cole for managing the website and our business operations, as well as Samantha Smith from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. For Dr. Charles Bush Joseph, I'm Steve Cashel saying so long. Thanks again for listening to Sports Medicine Weekly here on 670 The Score. Up next, Inside the Clubhouse, a great baseball show with Bruce Levine and Matt Spiegel. Talk with you again next week. Take care.